Good afternoon. This is Akashwani and I'm Anuja Kumar with the Midday News. The headlines. Maldives President Dr. Mohammad Moizu to arrive in New Delhi this afternoon on a 5-day visit. External Affairs Minister Dr. S J Shankar to call on the visiting dignitary today. Indian Air Force showcases aerial capabilities in a majestic air show at Marina Beach in Chennai as part of its 92nd anniversary celebrations. Preparations in full swing for counting of votes for Jammu and Kashmir and Haryana Assembly elections on Tuesday. At least 7 persons killed as fire breaks out in shop cum residential building in Mumbai. France and Israel engage in war of words over call for halt on arms deliveries to Tel Aviv. And in cricket, India to clash with Pakistan in group stage match of Women's T20 World Cup in Dubai this afternoon. Men in blue to take on Bangladesh in first T20 international of three match series in Gwalior in the evening. And now the news in detail. President of Maldives Dr Mohammad Moizu will arrive in New Delhi this afternoon on a 5-day state visit to India. External Affairs Minister Dr S J Shankar will call on the visiting dignitary today. President Moizu will be accorded a ceremonial reception at the Rashtrapati Bhavan tomorrow morning. He will also hold talks with Prime Minister Narendra Modi on bilateral, regional and international issues of mutual interest. Several agreements are expected to be signed following the meeting. The Maldives president will meet President Draupadi Murmu tomorrow evening. During his visit, Dr. Moizu will also visit Agra, Bengaluru and Mumbai. More from a correspondent. Maldives is India's key maritime neighbor in the Indian Ocean region and holds a special place in Prime Minister's vision of Sagar and India's neighborhood first policy. The visit of the Maldivian president to India after the recent visit of the external affairs minister to the island nation is testimony to the importance that India attaches to its relations with Maldives. The visit is expected to lend further momentum to cooperation and robust people to people ties between the two countries. Suparna Saikya, Akashwani News. The Indian Air Force (IAF) conducted a mega air show on the Marina Beach in Chennai today. The scintillating air show is being held as part of the 92nd anniversary of the IAF observed on 8th of October. More from our correspondent. Fighter jets including Tejas, Mirage, Sukhoi 30, Jaguar aircraft participated in the thrilling air show. The Surya Kiran aerobatic team and Sarang helicopter display team showcased the operational capabilities during the show. Later talk, talking to Akashwani News, one of the expect, spectators described watching the air show as a wonderful experience. Uh, we saw a chopper and we saw some people who have come down in the parachute it was nice to watch and uh, even though in so much heat there are lots of people lots of crowd here it's nice to see almost the entire chennai over here and uh, it's it's a wonderful experience it's definitely a life changing experience The National Investigation Agency NIA has carried out searches and multiple raids in connection with an ongoing investigation into a terror financing case involving Jaisi Muhammad. The raids were conducted yesterday across five states and union territories including Jammu and Kashmir, Maharashtra, Uttar Pradesh, Assam and Delhi covering 26 locations. During the searches, NIA team seized several incriminating documents, electronic devices, pamphlets and magazines the suspects were engaged in radicalizing individuals and recruiting them into the jamaat outfit inspired by jaish e mohammad the delhi police today busted a huge illegal weapons factory at meerut in uttar pradesh the crime branch of delhi police has so far arrested two accused in the case and recovered around 16 weapons the police are currently investigating the incident 
Preparations are in full swing in Jammu and Kashmir and Haryana for counting of votes on Tuesday for the assembly elections. Robust security arrangements are being put in place at all counting centers across Haryana and Jammu and Kashmir for a smooth conduct of counting. In Haryana, a voter turnout of around 67% has been recorded in the assembly polls. Single-phase polling for all 90 constituencies in the state was held yesterday. After peaceful conclusion of voting process, now electronic voting machines have been kept under three-layer security in strong rooms at different districts. Our correspondent has the details. In Haryana, electronic voting machines were kept in strong rooms amid tight security. According to Chief Electoral Officer Pankaj Agarwal, the EVMs have been kept in three-layer security. Paramilitary forces have also been deployed along with Haryana Police for security of electronic voting machines. Strong rooms are also being monitored through CCTV cameras. Now the EVM machines will be taken out from the strong room on the day of counting. Ashwini Kumar Sharma, Kashwani News, Chandigarh. In Jammu and Kashmir, voting took place in three phases on 18th and 25th of September and 1st of this month. The overall voter turnout across all three phases was recorded at 63.88%. To ensure a hassle-free experience on the counting day, essential infrastructure and safety measures have been put in place. The assembly election was significant for the Union Territory as it was the first since the abrogation of Article 370. This is Akashwani giving you the news. For quick news updates round the clock, follow us on our X handle at AIR News Alerts. In Maharashtra, at least seven members of a family, including three minors, were killed after a fire broke out at a single-story shop come residential structure in chamber area of Mumbai. The mishap occurred early this morning when a shop at the ground floor of the building caught fire due to faulty electrical wiring and later spread to other parts of the building. Talking to reporters, Deputy Commissioner of Police of Zone 6 in the city, Hemrat Singh Rajput said they are investigating the exact cause of the fire. सुबह छह बजे एक कॉल मिला जिसमें एक शॉप था और ऊपर दो मंजिला में उसी फैमिली के लोग रहते थे तो इसमें सात लोग झुलसे और उनकी डेथ हुई है और दो लोग जो शॉप में सोए थे वो बाहर निकले हैं जो फायर हुआ है उसके जो रीजन है उसके बारे में हम फॉरेंसिक टीम और फायर ब्रिगेड की टेक्निकल टीम है उनसे हम इन्वेस्टिगेट करवा के एग्जैक्ट रीजन का पता करवाएंगे सिक्सटी स्टूडेंट्स फ्रॉम द पूरन मल्लाहोटे गवर्नमेंट पॉलिटेक्निक एट लातूर इन महाराष्ट्र व एडमिटेड टू अस्पिटल ड्यू टू food poisoning following dinner at their hostel last evening. The police have launched an investigation and food samples have been sent to the laboratory for testing. Following the incident, Member of Parliament Dr. Shivaji Karge and District Collector Varsha Thakur visited the hospital and inquired about the condition of the students. As tensions escalate in West Asia, French President Emmanuel Macron yesterday called for a halt on its arms deliveries to Israel for use in Gaza, provoking a sharp response from Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. President Macron also criticized Prime Minister Netanyahu's decision to send troops for ground operations into Lebanon. On the other hand, the Israeli Prime Minister in a video message slammed the French president, saying all civilized countries should be standing firmly by Israel's fight against the forces of barbarism led by Iran. As Israel fights the forces of barbarism led by Iran, all civilized countries should be standing firmly by Israel's side. Yet President Macron and some other Western leaders are now calling for an arms embargo against Israel. Israel will win with or without their support. Israel is defending civilizations against those who seek to impose a dark age of fanaticism on all of us. Rest assured, Israel will fight until the battle is won, for our sake and for the sake of the peace and security of the entire world. Meanwhile, the Israeli forces bombed a mosque in Dire Bala in Gaza, killing at least 21 Palestinians and wounding dozens others. More from a correspondent. The ongoing West Asia conflict, violence has escalated on multiple fronts. Beirut's southern suburbs endured heavy consecutive strikes from late Saturday into Sunday. Meanwhile, Gaza's civil defense agency reported a devastating Israeli airstrike on a mosque in central Gaza, resulting in 21 deaths and dozens of injuries. 
However, the Israeli military claims it was serving as a Hamas control center. The attack comes as the war between Israel and Hamas in the Palestinian territory near its first anniversary on October 7th. In northern Gaza, the Israeli military announced on Sunday that its troops have successfully surrounded the Jebelia region. This operation was reportedly in response to intelligence suggesting Hamas was attempting to rebuild its operational capabilities in the area, despite nearly a year of ongoing strikes and fighting. This is Vinod Kumar for Akashwani News from Dubai. Israel also expanded its strike in Lebanon yesterday. It bombarded deep into the north part of the country for the first time, targeting both armed groups, Hezbollah and Hamas. Israeli military spokesperson said 440 Hezbollah fighters were killed in its ground operations in southern Lebanon and it destroyed 2,000 Hezbollah targets. Thousands of people in Lebanon continued to flee amid widening conflict in the region. Meanwhile, rallies were held around the world yesterday, marking the approaching first anniversary of the start of the war in the West Asia region following the terror attack in Israel by the Palestinian group Hamas. World Cerebral Palsy Day is being observed today to raise awareness about the condition and promote inclusivity. The day aims to challenge stereotypes and work towards creating an inclusive society where individuals with cerebral palsy are respected for their identities and talents. The theme for this year is Uniquely CP, which emphasizes that a person's disability does not define their entire identity. Several events are being held across the country to raise awareness about cerebral palsy and empower those affected by it. Defense Research and Development Organization, DRDO, has successfully conducted three flight tests of the fourth generation very short-range air defense system at the Pokhran Field Firing Ranges in Rajasthan. The tests, conducted in the last two days, were carried out against high-speed target, demonstrating very critical parameters of maximum range and maximum altitude interception. Ministry of Defense said that these development trials showcased repeatability of hit-to-kill capability of the weapon system in various target engagement scenarios covering approaching, receding, and crossing modes. Very short-range air defense system is a man-portable air defense system designed and developed indigenously by Research Center Imarat in collaboration with other DRDO laboratories. Defense Minister Rajna Singh has congratulated DRDO, armed forces, and the industry involved in the successful development trials. He said this new missile equipped with modern technologies will give further technological boost to the armed forces against aerial threats. On to sports. In the Women's T20 Cricket World Cup, India will lock on with arch-rival Pakistan in Dubai today. The match will start at 3.30 p.m. Indian Standard Time. A win would give Harman Preet Kaur's team their first points and some breathing room, having lost their opening match against New Zealand on Friday. On the other hand, the men in blue will take on Bangladesh in the first T20 international of the three-match series in Gwalior today. The match will start at 7 p.m. Indian Standard Time. Earlier in a two-match test series against Bangladesh, India achieved a convincing whitewash, securing the 18th consecutive home series victory. Hockey India today announced the 18-member junior men's team set to participate in the 12th edition of the Sultan of Johar Cup in Malaysia. Newly appointed head coach P.R. Srijesh will take charge of the team in Malaysia with Amir Ali serving as captain and Rohit named as his deputy. India will begin their campaign against Japan on the 19th of this month, followed by a clash with Great Britain on the 20th. After a day's rest, India will face hosts Malaysia on the 22nd, followed by a match with Australia on 23rd. The final will be played on the 26th of this month. The IMD, India Meteorological Department, has forecast light to moderate rainfall over northeast and south peninsular India today. The IMD said Arunachal Pradesh, Assam, Meghalaya, Tamil Nadu, Puducherry, Karaikal, Kerala, Mahi, Rayal Sima, and coastal and south interior Karnataka are very likely to witness isolated heavy rainfall in the next two to three days. And now, before we end the bulletin, the headlines once again. Maldives President Dr. Mohammad Moizu to arrive in New Delhi this afternoon on a five-day visit. External Affairs Minister Dr. S. J. Shankar to call on the visiting dignitary today. Indian Air Force showcases aerial capabilities in a majestic air show at Marina Beach in Chennai 
as part of its 92nd anniversary celebrations. Preparations in full swing for counting of votes for Jammu and Kashmir and Haryana Assembly elections on Tuesday. At least seven persons killed as fire breaks out in shop come residential building in Mumbai. France and Israel engage in war of words over call for halt on arms deliveries to Tel Aviv. And in cricket, India to clash with Pakistan in group stage match of Women's T20 World Cup in Dubai this afternoon. And with that, we end the Midday News.